Okay, this brings us now to the to the actually what turns out to be the most common form of, of double strand break repair, both in yeast cells and in, in mammalian cells, and that is a homologous recombination known as gene conversion. In gene conversions, actually only a very, very small piece of DNA needs to be synthesized. The broken DNA molecule here uh, finds a template. That template could be a sister chromatid, but it also could be a homologous chromosome, or it could be a little piece of the same sequence located in an, a, a different location, a so-called ectopic location. And that uh, ends of then find this homologous sequence and use a small amount of new DNA synthesis to patch up the, the chromosome break. Sometimes this can be associated with crossing over and that can lead uh, to loss of heterozygosity. Okay. Um, a mechanism by which gene conversion takes place is in some ways similar to but different from the mechanism of break-induced replication. Here's a mechanism uh, first suggested by uh, Michael Resnick in 1976 and then refined by Shostak or Weaver, Rothstein, and Stahl in 1983, uh, which has gone through a lot of modifications to the form that I'm showing you now. Um, the idea of this mechanism is, again, there's a double strand break. The ends of the double strand break are chewed away by those same exonucleases that I talked about before. And then these ends of the double strand break attract RAD51 or RecA recombinase and engage in strand invasion. But unlike what happened in, over here in, in break-induced replication, both ends of the double strand break can engage in this process. And one ends up with the structures that are shown here, um, in which there are essentially uh, both ends of the double strand break have engaged in strand invasion. And then there's the initiation of new DNA synthesis. But it's, again, different from what happens in break-induced replication. In break-induced replication, we saw that there was both leading and lagging strand DNA synthesis. But here, the two three prime ends of the, of the broken molecule serve as primers. And each one of these primers le sets up leading strand synthesis. So there's no lagging strand synthesis. And in fact, there is no requirement for lagging strand polymerases during this process. And this uh, then these two blue lines represent new DNA synthesis, which are emanating directly from the three prime ends uh, of the invading strands. In the mechanism that I'm showing you here, um, this uh, leads to the formation of an intermediate structure, which is something we, which we haven't seen before, but is reminiscent of things we have previously seen. Namely, there is not one holiday junction structure, but two holiday junctions. And this double holiday junction mechanism um, uh, turns out to have some very remarkable features of its own. Um, as these holiday junctions are resolved, this structure can either be uh, resolved so that there is no crossing over and the red sequences here and the red sequences here remain uh, associated with each other, or there can be crossovers depending on the resolution of these holiday junctions so that here the red sequences are now joined to blue sequences and vice versa. So this is a different mechanism from break-induced replication. It involves very limited amounts of DNA synthesis, and the DNA synthesis is primed by the three prime ends of the, of the uh, invading DNA molecule, and it does not involve lagging strand synthesis. <clears throat>